I just finished reading the sequel to Ender's Game, that being Speaker of the Dead, and today we're going to be talking about it. Today I'm going to be reviewing it, but there are a couple things that you might need to know moving forward. We're going to get into this in just a second, and of course, this is a spoiler review. We're going to talk about everything, what I liked, what I didn't like. We're going to talk about the entire story down below in just a second. I said comment. This intro is already a mess. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with many YouTube channels. Let's talk about Speaker of the Dead. So it is important to note this actually, and I am a big fan of books. I've been reading books for a very long time, but I have been reading. This is my first novel that I've read. I've always been reading books, and I, this is how non-knowledgeable that I am about books and my <laughs> my lack of knowledge when it comes to reading literature is I only read books to kind of learn something like I just read a book about fossil fuels I love Bill Bryson's book that that kind of stuff I read books to kind of learn something this is the first time that I've actually read a storybook apart from obviously when you read stuff in grade one but that does not count one little bit so the reason that I decided to do this is because I've I've dabbled in within the idea of one day wanting to write a book myself and obviously I would need to learn how to how books kind of become themselves and everybody just loves reading books right and i like reading books when it comes to just learning things why wouldn't i like a storybook the reason that i chose this book is because a long time ago when ender's game came out i want to say it was in like 2010 i thought the movie was phenomenal i gave it a 10 out of 10 i couldn't believe more people didn't talk about it and i was so sad and still to this day very very sad that the books never got put into movies past ender's game I don't know if it's because it didn't do well in the box office. Well, that had to have been the reason. But I've always been very fascinated by Ender's story. And I always kind of wanted to know what happened after that. So I didn't read the book to Ender's Game. I watched the movie and I asked, I literally asked ChatGPT. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Do, is there anything that I need to know from the first book if I've already seen the movie? And it gave me a little bit of information, but not enough that I, I remember enough to tell you. So obviously it wasn't really that important. I could dive into this story. And honestly... I dove into the story perfectly fine. I felt like there was nothing that I really needed to know from Ender's Game after watching the movie. And I've always found Ender's story particularly interesting. I don't know why. I just really enjoyed it, man. And I can't wait to continue reading on with the series. And I've had a little bit of a rough time with this. I don't know if it's because it's actually my first book. And maybe that's how books are. Maybe it was slow. But I found myself completely not interested one little bit until Ender showed up. I was interested in Ender's story. I was interested in Ender's game. I wasn't really looking for the Xenologers. I flat out just didn't care one little bit until Ender ended up showing up. Like I said, I thought the book was going to be a continuation of Ender with the Hive Queen. I wanted to see that storyline build, and I can kind of see where this is going now, of course, now that I finished the book, and I really liked how the book kind of went on. So starting off the book, we're brought to these Xenologers, and I was really confused because I was like, okay, Maybe I do need to read the first book, but then again, it literally just was this story, and I didn't figure out until later on, or it didn't clue into me that this is years down the road, years down the road. So I'm not going to be breaking down every single little piece of the book. Basically, of course, there's an investigation for these murders, and there's this character named Peepo who found something out about this species that they were studying. They called them the piggies, of course, and once he found out this information, everybody found him murdered with a sapling planted inside of him. He was kind of like, what do you call it? He was just ripped limb from limb or something like that. But they needed to figure out what that information was, why it was so important. This became like this own this own murder mystery type book. And I thought this was where the whole book was going. I thought that, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I didn't think that we were going to see Ender. But then obviously we figured out that Ender became the Speaker of the Dead, which I didn't know. Again, that either be that either is because of my lack of knowledge from the first book or just me being dumb. And maybe it's a... <laughs> maybe I had problems reading because it was my first book. Now, I'm very capable of reading, but maybe it's because it's a lot of things to remember from my first storybook. But anyways, I hope you guys don't sit here and think I'm a complete idiot. <laughs> maybe it was difficult to follow for somebody else, but it ended up making sense probably within the first quarter of the book. It kind of, yeah, I kind of, it took a while to get used to all these new characters, what was going on. I spent a lot of time while I was reading kind of thinking, oh my God, where's Ender? And maybe I wasn't paying attention that much. Maybe that's where it went wrong. I promise you my brain is not fried from TikTok, okay? So, Novinia ends up calling for a Speaker of the Dead. The Speaker of the Dead is to kind of just solve murders, figure out the motives of the dead, kind of figure out everything about this own situation. And apparently there are multiple Speakers of the Dead. And again, I didn't know that Ender was the Speaker of the Dead. I didn't, or maybe I missed it, but I didn't know that this was 
years down the road. Now, the story didn't really pick up until Ender ended up actually coming and meeting everybody, which we found out that from the call, it was over 20 years later. Ender traveling through time, time just kind of doesn't age him, and, like, the way that he time travels, everything, like, I, it doesn't matter. He he is barely in his 30s, and he's been traveling for many, many, many years. I don't remember how many they actually specified, but it's basically to the point where it was enough time where humans have colonized many different planets. So, what Novinia thinks is that she canceled the speaker's call, but Ender shows up here 22 years later, and he's like, hey, I'm here to figure out what's going on with Peepo. He ends up bonding with the children in a very specific manner, and he ends up just trying to speak to death either way. But nobody knows it's actually Andrew Wiggins. Everybody just thinks it's a speaker from the dead, because especially they're talking about, like, Ender, Ender the genocidal maniac, right? <laughs> so, he, I don't remember exactly when they figured out that it was actually Ender, but... They, he ended up talking to a bunch of the piggies, trying to figure out the situation, trying to figure out their motives, why they killed people, and where I really found myself getting more interested, and I couldn't wait for it, because a specific piggy named Human, which was a strange name for an alien, of course, he was being delivered messages by the Hive Queen, just like Ender was in Ender's Game, and this is where I started really, really enjoying the book, but of course, this was a little bit down the road from beginning the book. I'm glad that I stuck this out, because... I'm interested to see where this goes from here, and I wanted to see what was going to happen with Ender, I wanted to see what was going to happen with the Hive Queen, but we figured out after all of this time, Ender was traveling with the Hive Queen, trying to figure out where he can plant the buggers and continue on their civilization, he's made it his own duty, he left. I still don't love that the second book didn't continue straight on from Ender going to the Hive Queen, I wanted to see what was going to happen there, I don't know if there's any books in between, but... I just looked it up. There's three books, and I know that the author has many, many books. I don't know if there's any more connections from that, but I wanted, that's what I wanted to see. I'm not unhappy with this story, but it's not what I wanted to read the book for. If I knew what this plot was before reading the book, I wouldn't have read it, but at the end of the day, I'm glad that I did. So the, bug, the Hive Queen is communicating telepathically with these new piggies, and Ender finds that very interesting. So Ender goes and visits with human. He goes and visits with all the wives, and there was the... The wives of all the piggies were very interesting because they are, like, really, really above everything else. There was this big secret about the wives, and the weird thing was, the big secret about them is their life after death, which I, I wasn't satisfied with this murder mystery, okay? I was more satisfied with Ender's story. And maybe that's because I was going into this book, but I really tried to come in with an open mind, man. I really, really tried, but to have all of this build up, like, what could the secret possibly be, was just for the piggies to have another life after death. Essentially, they become trees because of a virus, and so they ended up trying to give Peepo his second life, trying to go for a tree, and then Ender kind of had to explain to the piggies that, hey, when you die as a human, you're gone. Nothing happens, and he explored the idea because, of course, like, the the book had a theme of Catholicism in it, but the piggies didn't like that. They were all crying. They felt bad. They enjoyed people. That was really the big discovery, and that wasn't enough for me. That wasn't enough. I wanted to see some grand reveal, and I was kind of, like, sitting here. I'm like, okay, you know, that's it. They end up having a meeting, and Ender wants to bring the Hive Queen there. The Hive Queen has been talking to the piggies, and they kind of work out an entire situation where... Everybody lives in peace. There's three people here. There's the humans, there's the piggies, there's the hive queen and the buggers. If two people are fighting, the third party will solve the conflict and nobody will kill each other. That all seems fair, but I don't imagine as the book continues that it's all going to work out like that. When humans are a part of something, not human, the piggy, I'm talking about us humans. Whenever we're a part of something, we are incapable of peace. There is no way that the humans are going to let the hive queen and the piggies live themselves. Look, they, they they went to this planet and just studied them, put up electric fences, didn't let them explore. They wanted metal so they could build a spaceship and just go visit the stars. They are normal beings, innocent beings, and look what we're doing to them, man. That's where I feel like this story's gonna go a little bit. And the story concludes with Ender finally finding a home for the Hive Queen, and something that I forgot to mention is that everybody knew who Ender was because what Ender did after destroying all of the buggers, he wrote a book kind of telling everything, a biography of his life, and he continued at the end of this story writing another biography of the life of a human because he had to kill human to honor him, and it was a really, really strange thing. He wanted to become a father tree, so to get that third life, one, or the second life, once you kill him, Ender had a big problem killing somebody again. 
everything ended up being okay with uh, Novinia. And I just found it interesting the way that the Ender's story ended up being told, because he ended up being the speaker for the dead. There's multiple speakers of the dead. Nobody knows that Ender is alive because of the way that he travels. He remained alive after all of these years. He has left a mark on the entire world. Like I said, he just, he wrote a biography about himself. Everybody knows him as this giant, giant killer, which is insane to me. Like, I would have never expected the story to go this way, and I don't hate it. I, I don't, I, I don't like it. I don't dislike it. I'm kind of neutral to it, but I am invested, and I can't wait to see where this book leads on to. Now I kind of know what to expect for this, from this entire universe, and if I would imagine the next book would take place maybe once the buggers are populated, maybe a few years down the road, and the way that I see the third book coming is I would imagine it has to do with Congress and all of the different planets. Maybe they'll have a problem with the Hive Queen. I don't know. Maybe the they want to kill the buggers again. Maybe the buggers are a threat to humankind. What if, dude, what if planning the Hive Queen was a mistake? Maybe, the, oh, dude, I never even thought of this. What if the Hive Queen goes after Ender? That would be a banger story. That would be a banger story. She was using him all this time. Just wanted revenge. But then again, she did understand Ender's motives, and she was speaking to him in Ender's game. So maybe that's a tad far-fetched, but something's going to happen with Congress. It's gotta. I just don't know exactly what. Peace isn't going to stay. There's no way those three live on the same planet completely okay. And here I am talking about it. Here I am interested. And again, out of everything that happened, I don't care about Novinia. I don't care about Miro. I don't care about people. I don't care about human. I care about Ender and Ender's story. And that was the whole motivation for me reading this book. I loved Ender's game. I wish they would have continued making movies because honestly, I did enjoy the story, but I would have much rather watched a movie on it. <laughs> I just, I like the visuals. I like sitting back, having some popcorn or whatever, instead of reading on a Kindle. And I don't, I don't just, obviously I like reading. I just prefer watching a movie or prefer watching shows. Regardless, this is the best that we're going to get. I'm going to continue on with the series. I am reading a different book as we speak, and <laughs> it's actually about sports betting and like the history on sports books. So those are the types of books that I actually end up reading. It's just to kind of learn something. I like history books. I like learning about some specific thing. Like I said, the book that I'm reading right now is diving into the history of sports books, how they have all kind of come to be, how, what, what they do over there in making those websites. Like I find all of that kind of interesting. So this was a book that I started for the first time. or it's my first novel and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I can't wait to follow Ender's story. Let me know what you thought about Speaker of the Dead down below. I know this review was kind of all over the place. So I apologize for that. I hope you enjoyed the video either way. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested, why don't you check out the last book that I read on screen right here now if you want to continue watching the channel. If not, though, I'll have another video at the bottom of the screen. You can check that out if you want to keep watching the channel. It's about a movie. You can check that out there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care.